Hey there, I am in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, and I am at the Norris area. This area has a geyser basin, one of the original trailside museums, and the Museum of the National Park Ranger. I've never been to this area, so I'm excited to check this place out. First, I'm gonna take a look at the historic Norris Museum, one of the original trailside museums built in 1929. This structure is in the National Park rustic style and is a National Historic Landmark. Now this one, especially compared to the Fishing Bridge Museum, is a bit underwhelming. It's small and there's no real artifacts or anything, but there's some signs about the geology of the Norse Geyser Basin and the geothermal features of Yellowstone. Norris is one of the most unique Yellowstone geyser basins, as it is the intersection of two major fault lines. The Norris Mammoth Fault, which goes to Gardner, Montana, and the Hebgen Lake Fault. The Hebgen Lake Fault experienced a big earthquake in 1959 that was very destructive and changed the geothermal patterns in much of the Yellowstone caldera permanently. These faults and the ring fracture zone all in one location caused this to be the hottest geyser basin in the park. The colloidal pool is a double spring, that's pretty interesting. That is the hurricane vent, with some real murky blue waters. There's the porcelain spring, one of the most beautiful springs in the entire park, and definitely one of the most unique based on its color. That's Constant Geyser. The waters here are acidic, different from all other basins in the park, and this causes colors to be different here, as different types of thermophiles, which give them their colors, can live in these waters. Norris is the fastest changing area in Yellowstone. New geysers and pools appear and break annually. The Norris Geyser Basin is huge and there's lots of boardwalk to cover. Unfortunately, most of it is closed off. I'm now at the Museum of the National Park Ranger. This building was the Norris Soldier Station, used as an outpost during the Army days, and it was built in 1908. 
About 20 soldiers were stationed here during the summer, but only one or two in the winter. It now has all sorts of artifacts and information about the National Park Rangers, the keepers of some of the country's and the world's greatest treasures. That is a bust of the first ranger, Harry Yount, who arrived here in Yellowstone in 1880 as the park's first gamekeeper, and he protected Yellowstone wildlife from poaching. That's a ranger firefighting uniform. There's the iconic flat hat, still similar to those worn back in 1916, and I've tried to reel one of these on and they're surprisingly heavy. There's some ranger boots, shoes, and gloves, some snowshoes, Winter gets serious at some of these parks. That's a taxidermy owl. Rangers do educate about wildlife, so here's some skulls and fossils. This is what the backcountry cabins look like. In many of the huge national parks, like in Alaska, they will have little cabins like this that rangers live and work out of with minimal necessities. There's some National Park Ranger badges. There's a classic uniform along with a big furry bison coat. I don't think they wear these anymore. A Springfield rifle and some other weapons that were carried by the early Rangers. That's an old saddle. The earliest rangers did have to ride around on horseback. That's a field glass case carried during the 1869 Folsom, Cook, and Peterson expedition. There's an antique speed graphic camera from the early 20th century. Future President Gerald R. Ford was a park ranger here at Yellowstone in 1936. He was stationed at Canyon, and he did later on add 18 new units to the national park system while president. This room is still preserved to look like the army bunk room it once served as. As this was the world's first national park, the idea has spread to most countries, and these are badges from foreign national park systems. I've stopped off at the Roaring Mountain, which reaches a height of 8,152 feet. What's really interesting is that there are a bunch of fumaroles on the slope of the peak here. During the early 1900s, it was recorded being so loud that it could be heard for miles around. Unfortunately, it doesn't really make any noises anymore, but it's still pretty cool. I'm now at one of the lesser known geothermal areas, the Artist Paint Pot. It's a one mile trail that goes up on the hill there, and has some pretty unique geothermal features. This conifer forest surrounding the paint pots is recovering from the big 1988 wildfire. All of these hot springs and mud pots up here are considered the artist's paint pots. 
This mud pot is very entertaining to watch up close. This is a really great little hike with great features, so don't miss the artist's paint pots. My last stop in Yellowstone National Park is Gibbon Falls. The falls drop 84 feet and is a few miles upstream from the confluence of the Gibbon and Firehole Rivers. So that was the Norris Geyser Basin and Artist's Paint Pot. If you enjoyed this video, I have other videos here at Yellowstone National Park. I went all over the park, so please go check out my other videos, and thanks for watching.